Hello. Today I am working with the FX CG500 CAS graphing calculator from Casio and I'm using the emulator software uh, so I can show you uh, how much space you have if you actually use this. If you're working with students and you need a nice larger view window you can do that with the CG500. So this is the emulator in what we call the resizable mode and I will revert back to the mode that looks like a calculator but as you can see I can change the size of this but I have a nice big screen it has the same menu items um, the files I can do all the same things they're just in a different type of layout when you're working with the emulator if you want it to be this um, you can capture the screen you can do all the things that you can do here's all the menus again um, in a list option so we're gonna go into geometry today today's focus is on constructing the centroid of a triangle. So we're going to go into the geometry app. So you simply click that on your app menu, on your menu item. So if you are a student working in the handheld, you could use your finger since it is a touch screen or you could use your stylus. So we're going to go into the geometry app and I have this nice big white space right here and I want to construct the triangle or make a triangle and I want it to be a general triangle. So a couple ways I could do do that. I could um, use segments and make a triangle that way so that it's a general triangle which I could then turn into any triangle but I want to start with the general so that what I find out the conjectures the the properties I find apply to all triangles or a quick way to do that is you could go into special triangle and just choose triangle so let's just do that notice up here another way to choose what you want to do is using the pictures so over here, I could have chosen different pictures, you know, polygons. Uh, this right here is isosceles. I don't want to choose a specific type of triangle. I want to use the generic. So I've chosen this. This is my tool. And now to get, a, since I'm using the triangle tool itself, it will construct a triangle in one step. I simply have to click somewhere on my screen. Same with students. They would use their finger or their stylus to click into the center of their window, view window. So here's my triangle and notice it tends to fill, when you use this tool, it fills the entire space. But this is a general triangle and I know that because I can click on a vertex, notice how it's selected, and then move it and make this be a different triangle and any triangle. So let's see if we can make it kind of look like a right triangle. And so since I can drag, this is the beauty of dynamic uh, geometry software, is that you can, it's not liking that I'm clicking this point. Now I'm going to drag it, make it a little, look. obviously I could measure that and make it exactly 90, but it looks like a right triangle now, right? But the idea here is you can actually make this be any triangle. And that's what we want. We want a generic triangle that can then be made into all types of triangles so that the properties and the definitions and the rules that I find, the observations I make apply to all triangles. So we're trying to do the centroid. So the centroid has to do with connecting the vertex of each, or the vertex of all the vertices, all the vertices of the triangle to the median of their opposite side. So A, I'm going to find the median of BC and connect that, and that is a median, or the midpoint of BC, and connect that to A, and that becomes my median. So a couple ways you can do this. First, you obviously need the midpoint of each side. So there is a tool that does that. If you select, so I'm using my arrow. If you select, notice it's selected, and you can kind of highlight and see. We're going to go up to either the draw menu to construct, and we want to construct a midpoint. So that's one way to do it. And so now you see you have this midpoint D. And by the way, you can make the points, the lines, all these things, different colors, larger sizes, just by selecting them. So let's, let's say we want to make this a larger point so we can actually see it. If I go into edit, so edit, as you'd expect, allows you to change what you see. And I want to go into style. And if I choose the graph plot, I can make this thin as the default. So we're going to make it thick and you'll see that it is much larger. I could also change the color, but we're just gonna leave it the way that it is right now. And so now you'll notice it's a much bigger point, so now I can see it. Let's go and do the midpoints of all the other sides, so the two other sides. So select again, and since, if you notice up here, I don't have to go into draw again, I already have the tool as an option right here, so I can just click it, and it makes that midpoint here of E. So we could go again into our um, style and make that look like a larger point so that I can see it when I'm working with it. 
And let's do the last one. And I'm not going to make it larger just to save us time. So the last one, I'm going to, again, just click. And there's my midpoint. So I've made the midpoints. And you could verify this with students. You could measure the distances to prove that each um, from B to D is congruent from C to D. So that's what a midpoint is. But hopefully at this time, they understand that. So now I have the midpoints. And now all I need to do is get a segment and connect each vertex to the midpoint that is opposite on the side that is opposite it. So we're going to go over here to our picture menu basically and choose segment tool and I'm going to click on my start point and my end point and it should make a segment for me. So let's do the same with all the vertices. So C is going to connect to its midpoint of the side opposite it and then B is going to connect to the midpoint opposite it. So there is the this intersection, um, they are concurrent. They're all connecting in this one point is now what we call the centroid. So maybe I want to actually see it. So let's, let's get out of this tool first. Let's select two of these and construct the intersection. So again, I'm going to my construction menu and hitting the one that looks like an intersection. And there's that point. Maybe I want to make this one definitely larger so that I can see it a little better. So style, thick. OK. And again, maybe we even want to change its color. Uh, let's change its color to be red so that it stands out. So now this right here is my centroid. It is formed by the intersections of the medians of this triangle. But since it's a generic triangle, if I move the triangle, let's notice what I observe. So this seems to stay always in the center of my circle, I'm a circle of my triangle. And so you're going to have students make, up, make observations and then actually use the measurement tools to, to come up with some things they notice. So one thing they notice, it seems to stay inside the triangle. Um, is it ever outside so they can make all different types of triangles, right? Where is it if I have a right triangle? So we could try and see, make a right triangle. So again, we're just eyeballing here, but I could try to make something. So it still seems to be in the center. So they could then maybe um, measure, is it is the distance the same? And there is an interesting um, connection, so they're going to collect measures, but basically what they should find out is that the distance, so here's the, cen the centroid, the distance from the centroid to the median is always half the distance of the centroid to the vertex in the same, to the midpoint, I'm saying that wrong, centroid to the midpoint is, the, is half the distance of the centroid to the vertex, and that's true for each median that we have, and so that's something you want them to discover, so you need to have them measuring and stuff, and so you, know, you can just measure the length of these by selecting the points and going to measure, oops, I've selected too many things. I want to measure the distance. So you'll see right here this little symbol that looks like distance. So I'm going to measure that distance, and then I want to compare it to this distance. And they're not the same. What's the relationship? And so if they do the ratio, they're going to see that the, the, the difference is half or two times, depending on how you do your ratio. So this is what we want them to discover. And so that's how you construct the centroid uh, in the CG500. One thing you might want to also do is once they're done is save it. So that's a nice thing about this um, calculator is that you can save things you're doing. So notice I already have an in center saved. So let's call this my centroid. And so now I have my two of my points of concurrency already saved. I did want to go back and show you what this looks like. So I've been using it in the extended view. So let's right click and go to fix size so that you can see the difference. And so this is fixed size. So this is Again, you can move things around with your stylus or your finger if that's what you have. But this is what the students, if they're on the handheld, it looks like. So obviously it's a little smaller, and it, but I can still write text. I can still move things around. I can still uh, dynamically change things. So the difference, so the nice thing is when you are... Um, working with the emulator, you can make the screen much bigger, and that's great for whole class and things like that.